Hello friends, my name is Molly B and you're watching the Molly B YouTube channel. Now, yes, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, with me is my husband, very talented man here. Um, he's won two Grammy nominations. That's correct. Um, is in the International Polka Association Hall of Fame and has won many other awards. Um, most people see him commonly, I, shall I say, with a, an accordion. That's that's the view most people see him. He'll sit behind a piano sometimes, and every now and then he'll play a concertina. And so, that's what we're doing here today. Yes, yeah, so Concertina 101. A lot of people don't know a lot about the concertina. As many people don't know a lot about the like, accordion, even less know about the concertina. Um, it definitely is an instrument of its own. Um, this particular style of concertina got its start in Chemnitz, Germany. Um, eventually made its way to here to the States. Different makers have made it. And the one Ted is playing today was made in New Ulm, Minnesota by Christy Hengel. All right, Ted, um, I kind of give a brief history on yourself, but when did you start playing the concertina? I started fiddling with one, uh, no pun intended. Uh, mm. I think it would have been in the late uh, 90s. Okay, um, just because you wanted to, or was, were you asked by a band to play with them on concertina? No, I just, I thought it had a unique sound. It mm -hmm. looked unique, um, and I had the opportunity to see a lot of great players play, yeah. uh, you know, in the Polish style field, and um, so that interested me first in the concertina, and then seeing some of the guys in the Dutchman style field uh, really uh, kind of changed my perspective on all the things that this instrument can do. Yeah, it's it's such a neat instrument. Um, just a side note: I grew up in Minnesota, so it was very common for me to see concertina. So. This was even more common than an accordion to me until I expanded my horizons and saw how much an accordion was used. So this instrument is very dear to me. Um, so I'm really glad we're doing this today. Uh, there are so many things we can talk about the concertina. Um, so we are going to start first about the basic build, Ted. Can we just talk about the box itself, the bellows, and how that even works? Sure. So this, like an accordion and like a button box, is a reed instrument. So there's a bunch of little reeds inside here that are mounted in wood blocks. And when you push the bellows together, or apart, it forces air over those reeds, those reeds vibrate, and that's what creates the sound. Now, unlike an accordion, which has a piano keyboard, um, this has buttons on the right-hand side, as well as on the left-hand side. The other way that this differs from a button accordion, which also has buttons on both sides, a concertina on the left-hand side, or in other words, the bass side, only has individual notes. So you don't get chords like you do with a button accordion. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the, the layout of a concertina is rather peculiar. Uh, to play a scale, and that's in one key, and then to do it in other keys, you have to be much more advanced than I am. Uh, but, uh, you know, so they're kind of all over the place. These come in different keys. So yes. this is referred to by the Polish guys, Polish style guys, they will call this an A box. Uh, the Dutchman style guys will call this a C box. Um, and anyways, you can get these in, uh, you know, C, B flat, E flat. There's all different keys that you can get these concertinas in. And it all depends on uh, the songs that you're gonna play, what band you're gonna play with, what keys the band plays in, because it's very difficult to try to play one concertina in every key. There's a few guys who really are exceptional, but but that's kind of not the norm. Yeah, my head is spinning about information I want to give to you because there's just so many unique things about this. Okay, you just you just briefly said the Dutchman will call this Dutchman style players will call this box a C box. Okay, key of C. So instruments that are in key of C is like a flute, a piano. Okay. Um, uh, now, but then you you said the Polish will call it an A box. An A box because. Uh, the if you push down if you look really closely here you might be able to see that there's some numbers written above all of the mm -hmm. keys um, if you push down the five that is an A uh, so you play an A chord and hence an A box. a box so why would someone who plays Dutchman style music call this a C box uh, you'd have to ask them okay I'm not sure why or what the difference is because a C is that particular chord on an on this concertina that okay. is a lot of people know it as an A box. Yeah. Okay. So we're a very very common box, especially with the Dutchman players, is a B flat box, which known as a B flat. If you were playing a B flat box, 
if I was playing a, a B, B flat, flat box? box? Yes. Okay, so that no, I'm sorry. That would be a G. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole step. So in other words, this being a C box, numbers five, six, and seven make an A chord. If it was a B flat box, five, six, and seven would make a G chord, chord, so it drops it a whole step then. Okay, so do um, Polish call B flat box a G box? No, they call it uh, a B flat box. See, there's so many things in here. And it's slightly confusing though, I've been around this instrument all my life. Okay, we're gonna dig more into your right hand. Okay. Ted already alluded um, the numbers ahead, uh, ahead of it. We're gonna sh show you a sh piece of music a sheet music that concertina players that look at notes and numbers look like. That's um, right. And for those of you that are that are interested in learning to play concertina, um, there we'll post down below here. You'll see a link to a website that has a lot of different concertina music. It's all free. You can check into it and um, and take advantage of that and learn to yeah. play literally by number. Yeah, yeah. A lot of players do, and a lot of players only play by note. Um, okay, so one more time. So why? People ask me this all the time, and I don't have a really good answer. They say, why are some percent signs and like symbols, but then you have other ones that are strictly numbers. Ted, do you have an answer for that? I do not, other than, obviously, it would be confusing to be staring down at this and be seeing, you know, 31, 32, 33, 34. You see a lot of repetitive numbers, yeah. and I can only assume that maybe that has something to do with these different um, symbols that are on here. Okay, so I was told, maybe you can verify this, um, that the first concertinas only had eight buttons. And that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then since then, the uh, uh, concertina has expanded. And that's why beyond, I'm gonna push in Ted right now as I do this. Yep. Okay. That's an arpeggio. Okay, so I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna go five, six, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that makes sense, right? That makes sense because like right there you have a chord going on. Okay, but now the concertina needs to expand to play more music and add more accidentals. So these uh, concertina makers added onto them but really gave no good rhyme or reason. Yeah, they are just kind of, uh, it's almost like the concertina maker went drinking one night and came back and decided, <laughs> you know what, we're gonna put this one here, <laughs> here. Chad, uh, were you one of those concertina makers? <laughs> no, you did that really well. this loud. predates me, I think. Okay, more on the right hand side. He's got this um, long uh, silver lever. button here. Okay, can you explain that? The lever. This is a uh, air release. Okay. And if, if you look up close here in the front, uh, you should be able to see. A string. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's an air release. It allows air to move so you can get air um, whenever you're playing. Okay, so because if you don't press this lever and you don't press a button, ideally you're really not supposed to be able to push Move the, it. Yeah, yeah, hardly at all. The bellows in or out. Okay, one last thing over here on the right hand side. Oh, there's more. But one more thing. What is this, Ted? This is a shift. So uh, this is what they would call a quad. Uh, so it has four sets of reeds in the right hand side. And uh, they have quads, there's triples, there's doubles. Mm -hmm. It all refers to the amount of reeds that are on the right-hand side in the concertina. Uh, on a lot of concertinas, they will have a switch right here. Okay. Uh, sometimes there'll be little buttons along this side. And all those are, are shifts, or like stops are for an organ. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing and you flip that switch, it's going to disengage the lowest set of reed and give it that higher sound as opposed to when it's engaged. Yeah, okay. And then here's a simple question. I'm pretty sure that I know the answer. Why Why the design over here between the stars and the circles or, you know, because you, you commonly see like air holes like that. I, you, I think that this was just a common uh, decorative aspect of it, okay. but these were played into microphones before. There weren't internal mic systems. So okay. they built these boxes in a way that the sound would uh, travel out the end of the instrument so it could be amplified through a microphone okay. so people could hear it at dances and stuff like that. Okay, and we see down here, you do have um, yes, two I've got outputs. Yes, I've got a jack for a microphone and okay. I have, this one actually has uh, MIDI, MIDI installed <laughs> in it so I can use it to play left hand bass. Okay, very good. Okay, let's focus on your left hand, Ted. You know, there's one important aspect we forgot to mention. Forget? When we talked about the different notes, Yes. this, like a button box, is when you, uh, has different notes. It's a diatonic instrument. Mm -hmm. So when you hold a note down and you push the bellows in, you're gonna get one sound. And when you pull the bellows out by holding down those same keys, you're gonna get a different note. So like a harmonica. harmonica. Now 
the thing is, it sounds like it kind of makes sense here in the middle, but if I hold down like this B flat chord, or this C chord, so that again alludes to the uh, layout of the of the buttons that don't necessarily make this, a lot of logical sense. They so don't. They don't. Okay, very good. Now your left hand. How's your left hand different than your right hand? So the left hand, uh, you know, just so you can see, you know, it looks very similar. Basically the same kind of layout on mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. um, this has your bass notes. Okay. So it's got some lower uh, sounding. <laughs> And this is where you also then make your chords. And instead of holding down a single note to get, as you can hear, they're all individual notes. So to get a chord on the left hand, you actually have to play multiple notes. Once again, that's how that's different than a button accordion or a piano accordion, because on the left-hand side of accordions, those are bass notes and chords. So this is a this is a very unique instrument in that way. It makes it one more time difficult. But once again, there's numbers on that side as well. Yes. Okay. Um, any other thing we should mention? We talked about the bellows, and they're pretty red bellows in yeah. this one. You'll see a lot of guys. Uh, if you look on the top here. There are some uh, little eye holes there mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of guys will wear a shoulder strap and it'll hook down in there and they can stand and play. Uh, I just, myself, always got used to sitting and playing. So you see a lot of guys, they're like propped up on their case or on a stool and um, and that's the way they play, which seems to work better for yeah. me. The other thing I just, I'm just gonna mention that this air release, it is normal for a bellowed instrument, but when you're playing accordion, it's the left hand side. Yeah, so, so there's a difference. It's interesting um, that Ted is so talented on the, the accordion and yet can switch over to the concertina like it's no no other. Um, someone asked me, and I know you, you briefly touched on this, the similarity between this and a button accordion, um, the basic layout a little bit on the right hand side with the first few notes there but that's it and then the diatonic part of it correct why um the accordions have like i mentioned the left hand um similarity between the bass and the chord note um this was this is a great concertino 101 if you ask me ted is there anything else um that you'd like to add um there are still a couple guys who make concertinas um I know uh, Jerry Minar uh, still makes the Hangle brand of concertina, mm -hmm. um, and there's some other folks out there as well that, that do some concertina manufacturing. Uh, if anybody has one at home, it's not being used, let us know. We like to try yeah. to get these in the hands of people who are looking to play uh, or looking to learn or even just to upgrade uh, from the instruments that they have. So if you have one of these setting at home, uh, let us know. Uh, there's older ones, you know, that date back to the 1920s and 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, people think just because they're old, they're worth a lot of money. And the unfortunate reality is most of those older concertinas that have like abalone um, fill uh, or decoration on them really aren't worth much more than a, a decoration. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you get into, there's a lot of common brands like Hengel, uh, Star, Gem Deluxe, Stradivarius. Um, those are, Crown is another popular one. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the more popular brands that you'll find out there. Yeah, so um, now Ted often deals with our concertina sales when they come through here. What's a common question you ask someone when they're um, wanting to sell an accordion? So among the things that are really important is, number one, how many reeds uh, are in mm -hmm. the, the boxes we discussed earlier. So you can have three or four or even just two sets of reeds. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that's important, there are some concertinas that have plate reeds, and that's where all of the reeds are uh, riveted down to a metal plate and they give a different sound than um, a waxed reed, where each individual reed is waxed into a wood block. And how would someone know that? Uh, the easiest way is to, uh, most of these come apart pretty easily. Uh, okay. A couple screws, Okay. you know, be careful if you have, if you see that there's microphone inputs uh, or that kind of thing, and just carefully remove it. Uh, none of these things should be forced open. They are delicate instruments. So uh, you can open those up, you can take pictures inside, um, send them off to, um, you know, anybody, myself, Molly, uh, Jim, you know, anybody that, yeah. you know, has uh, some concertina knowledge, we'll be happy to let you know what you've got. Yeah. All right, Ted, are you going to play a little bit for I us? I can play a little bit. 
Okay. Just okay. a little bit. All right. Okay. Let's see here. What would you like? Um, well, I grew up in the Dutchman style, so any Dutchman. Any Dutchman yeah. style? So we should explain a little bit about the difference between Dutchman and Polish style playing. Because oh, those are probably the two most prevalent yeah. um, styles that are used for concertina. Mm -hmm. um, what you'll find on the Dutchman style is they play a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, you, melody like and harmony notes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. So they'll play multiple notes at the same time. And their left mm -hmm. hand, traditionally, is a little bit uh, more staccato. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Whereas uh, Polish style, you'll hear more uh, fills, more embellishment sometimes. Uh, it tends to be primarily single notes. Uh, mm -hmm. And the left hand tends to be a little more uh, sustained or legato. Yes. Okay, so that's a Polish yes. style song. Okay. Great. There you go. Now, can you do one more thing? Can you, uh, when you play accordion, yes, you do the bellow shake. Bellow shaking. Now, I know you can't do that. The bellow shaking with this because now you're going to create different sounds. Right, when you yeah. But I've seen Polish concertina players emulate that sound. Can you do that for yeah, us? Yeah. So it's what they call. It's basically called a finger push. There's a lot of times what okay. they refer to it as. I hope you all enjoyed it, yes. and um, thanks for tuning in for our Concertina 101 with Molly B, and I'm Ted Lang. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you liked the video. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe. Let us know what you think down in the comments. And um, Yeah, so we'll put links below. We'll put yep. links um, to our website. We'll also put links where you can get some Concertina music just online. Um, any other thing that we think of between now and when we post this video, we'll put out there to help you understand um, and learn more about the concertina. That's right. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, everybody. Take care and God bless.